All right, welcome back to our remote writing workshop, everybody. So you've always heard the saying, don't judge a book by its cover. But as we've often said in these videos and in publishing, despite what our mothers have told us, we do judge books by their covers. And that doesn't necessarily apply to this business. So let's talk about what really goes into making a truly fantastic cover. Whether you end up publishing in hardcover or paperback, it's always a good idea to know the elements that go into an effective book cover. So first, let's talk about terminology. What is a book jacket? Well, good question. And many people don't know the difference between when you say a book cover and a book jacket. So a book jacket is the removable paper cover that goes around a hardbound book and is there to protect the binding. And of course, that's where they print the info about the book and the author. Now there are exceptions. There's some hardcover books with jackets and they also print the copy on the cover itself. So if you take off the jacket, it's still there, but that's usually not the case. So on the whole, all the information about the book is on the jacket and paperback books don't have jackets. They simply have front and back covers. Uh, there are trade paperbacks, which are larger size printed on higher quality paper. And there are also mass market paperbacks, which are the smaller trim size and they're printed on less expensive paper and therefore they cost less for the consumer. And book jackets for hardcover books have a front cover they have the back cover and then they have the front and back flaps and that means there's more real estate more room uh, for the author and book information and typically the front cover is reserved for of course the cover art title author name perhaps one really strong endorsement or blurb and we usually place all of the endorsements or advanced praise about the book except for that one if it's strong on the back cover of a hardcover and if an author author doesn't have any endorsements we can always place we'll, we'll take a book excerpt or something for the back back cover. Now the front flap uh, of a jacket usually has a descriptive headline in a unique type and that's a sentence that will grab the reader's attention and then that's followed by the descriptive text about the book. So for example the headline would be dive into an exciting world of romance adventure and also when you turn to that so that's going to get your attention on the front flap and then on the back flap that's going to be reserved usually not all the time for author photo and author bio. This is just the typical layout. People can always do things differently. And as an author, you also wanna include on the flaps information such as author website, where the book is printed, imprint information, the price, all of these good kinds of um, details that your consumer will need. Awesome. So most authors focus on the cover art when thinking about their book jacket or cover. What are the most important things to remember about cover art? I love these conversations so much. <laughs> yeah, usually, I mean, when an author is thinking about a, a jacket or a cover, they're just thinking of the cover art. And there's so many other elements that go into it. So an effective book cover is going to draw your reader's eye, of course. So you want to make an impact. And whether that's using one bold color or a simple line art or a combination of elements, whatever it is, you want your cover to stand out and grab your reader's attention. And you also want it to look good thumbnail size for online buyers. And sometimes uh, authors don't think about this. So you want to remember that intricate details and smaller images might not translate well when it's posted on Amazon or other online re retailers. Um, and if you're working, if you're not working with a publisher, whether it's traditional or hybrid, um, there, of course, the publisher is going to have their own professional designers. Um, so if you don't have access to that, you're going to want to hire a cover designer who has experience in publishing because you want your book to be able to compete with the hundreds of thousands of other books out there. So if your book cover looks amateurish, readers are going to pass it by. They're not going to want to pick it up because it'll look a little less than. Uh, so you'll want to study other covers in your genre. This is whether you're publishing with a house or if you're self-publishing, because you want to research what's working. And it's a wonderful thing for readers as well to be able to figure out your genre, for instance, by simply glancing at your cover. Um, on the other hand, maybe you want to do something completely different to make your book stand out. And <laughs> we've said this before, but please don't use your daughter or your aunt or your friend's art unless they're a professional designer, because it usually ends up looking amateurish without input from a professional who has experience in publishing because they know what works and what doesn't. And it usually just looks bad. Um, not always, but usually. 
So ask for feedback from people in your life as well who read a lot of books and even better those who have industry experience. Um, publishing professionals, they really do know what works best and what doesn't, even that coming down to the preferred colors for different genres, styles, and they know what's appealing to readers, what works, and most importantly, what looks professional. Um, if you're working on a series, keep in mind that you want each of the covers to have kind of the same look and feel because you want to unite them all uh, under one overarching design. So that's important to remember as well. Totally. And something also just to throw in there, when you're working with a publisher, I know when you have kind of like an idea in your mind, um, just remember that your publisher is going to work with you on, you know, bringing your idea to life, but also they know best. And so they're not trying to sabotage you by taking away, but they, they also know something that works and what doesn't. So just mm -hmm. always be sure to be open to direction and open to feedback. Um, mm -hmm. And like Erin said, you know, you may have a daughter or a niece or nephew who you know is working on graphic design in college let them design something else other than your book cover just just take my advice on that please they can work on the website something yeah. like that for the book <laughs> yeah. give, them, give them something else but don't don't make them do the the whole cover design because right and like you said yeah the, the publisher will try and work with you we're we're not just here to like you know crush dreams and stuff like that you know if you if you give us an idea we'll we'll really try and make it work but you know we we have to give our professional opinion too if you have a designer, you know, we're, we're good at working with outside designers and really collaborating on the cover design because mm -hmm. they're pretty open to, you know, hearing what the publisher has to say too. So just, just be, just be aware that, you know, your publisher is trying to make the book sell yes. and trying, trying to help you book, and try to help your, your book do well. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> yes. All right. So what about writing the descriptive jacket or the back cover copy? What should authors keep in mind? Well, a lot of authors um, mistakenly think that you need to tell the reader everything that happens. So it's not a synopsis. Your cover copy should give information about the book, of course, but always remember that the jacket and back cover copy exist to sell your book, not just describe the plot or the subject matter. So this is your sales pitch. It's advertising. You're getting readers excited to read the book. So your aim is not to recite accurately every plot point or detail. It's to hook the reader, hit the highlights and keep them wanting more. So remember that the copy is an ad for your book. You're enticing the reader to buy it with your cover image, your words, the blurbs, and your copy should be short as well. 150, 200 words for the descriptive copy. You can add another 50 to 100 words for your author bio. You want that bio to be pertinent, professional, you don't need to get too into the fact that what you do with your cats and all of your hobbies, you can do that a little bit to add some color and flair, but you really want to keep it as professional as possible and pertinent to the book and topic at hand. Totally. Any other tidbits we need to know? Um, oh yeah, something that's just interesting. Many authors expect the special effects such as foil or embossing to come standard on their covers, uh, but those sorts of effects just, you know, they cost a lot of money and they're atypical. So those snazzy covers you usually see, those are reserved for usually best-selling authors with a big budget. Um, I mean, you can do spot gloss, what we call spot gloss and stuff like that. It's not too much, but if you want to invest in those sort of effects, that's your call, just know that it's expensive and you should really kind of expect some guaranteed sales to make it worthwhile before you invest in that. And um, of course, there's always exceptions. I just want to share a little story. When I was at uh, HarperCollins in New York, we did a paperback for James Rollins, who is now a best-selling adventure writer. But at the time, he was just starting out. That was about 20 years ago. And we invested a lot of money doing this holographic image on the cover of a paperback, which no one had ever done before. And it was really cool. And it was a huge risk to take. And uh, it really ended up making a splash with readers. And of course, he's an amazing writer. And he probably would have done incredibly well without that. But that was something where we really looked at it and said, okay, is it worth investing this money? And it did pay off, but you know, usually you're not gonna wanna put in tens of thousands of dollars on a print run to make a holographic image or you know, all of these cool special effects. So that's just, no, it costs money. <laughs> Definitely. This is all so interesting and so many elements go into covers. Um, and I'm sure there's a whole other video we can do just on cover images and cover design. But for now, what's the assignment for this week? 
yeah, so this will be fun. Just hop on Amazon, bnn.com, whatever, or even better, head down to your favorite bookstore and check out some covers. Which ones, if you're standing there, really jump off the shelves at you? Why did they catch your eye? Take notes on what colors are the most effective, what styles, what fonts, any unique ideas you notice. Pay close attention to trends within genres, especially your genre, and what best-selling authors are doing and not doing with their book jackets and covers. Uh, again, this is all about research, research, research. Always Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. As usual, thank you, Erin, so much for your insightful advice and insight into the world of book publishing and cover design and judging books by their covers because <laughs> you know what oh, in this industry we do do that <laughs> yeah in publishing in publishing we do um in, in other areas of your life you know don't but <laughs> try not to try not to <laughs> Okay, well, we will see you guys next time. Um, as usual, please let us know if you have any um, topics you'd like us for us to discuss mm -hmm. or any questions, feel free to send me a DM on the Greenleaf Instagram or send us just a note, uh, you know, leave a comment on these videos with what you want to see. Um, we are here for you guys. So you guys just let us know, but we will see y'all next time. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.